how do you define what makes us human inherently human? It, like I know it's a big question. It's like a million dollar sure. question. <laughs> it's it's a really it's a really interesting question. I should have anticipated how often I would get it, considering the name <laughs> <laughs> the name of the book. You know, and I think quite honestly that the, the, my answer does change. You know, every, the more I the more I think about it, I think one of the really fascinating things is if you go if you go back in history when um, the first conversations around you know ethical treatment of animals started, a lot of people would say things like, "Well, we don't have to be ethical about you know eating meat, for example, because animals are not humans. They can't do mathematics. They can't write books. They can't do all of these different these different things. And those are the things that make us human." And those are the things that separate us from animals, you know, these things that we uniquely can do. And yet what's happened, of course, is the fact that now that we have technology that can write a poem or write a book or perform, you know, really complex tasks, often better than ourselves, what we've started to say is, well, the thing that makes us human is our ability to feel, you know, which, which, is, which stands in stark contrast to a lot of the conversation around like how we've considered ourselves, you know, and our place within society, well, the world and in nature. I think one of the really big things is desire, the, the ability to want, the ability to, to, to need. And I think that is fundamentally human, at least right now. You know, whether that comes from a spiritual place or an evolutionary biological place, we want things and we need things and we hope for things, you know, constantly throughout our, throughout our day. In any story, if you want to write a compelling story, you always make the main character want something. You know, that's what makes a story interesting. And, and it's interesting because it's human. Um, GPT-3 will not wake up and decide that it wants an ice cream or that it's in love, or that it wants to build a better world. It only responds to our desires, our wants, our needs, the things that we want to fulfill. And so, you know, that's that's fundamentally something that's human. And then the other aspect of it, of it as well is the ability to find meaning in the world around us. So there's a bunch of different thought experiments around AI where it kind of mimics the act of, of, of feelings, of finding meaning, but ultimately it's what happens if you take a bunch of maths and a bunch of words and put it in a pot and stir it for long enough. Like, it's not really looking at a flower and seeing the cosmic fire on the other side of the universe, which is fundamentally a human thing. We, we, we read a poem, we look at nature, we, we, we watch a movie or Titanic and we cry in Titanic because, you know, no one to spoil it, but Jack dies, you know, <laughs> um, but like we, we, we watch these things and we engage these with, with these things and they affect us. And so meaning, desire, a lot of the things that, you know, maybe animals have are the things that, that, that make us human and separate us from this technology in a real way. The technology itself is a very human technology in saying all of that. And what I mean by that is what you've got to remember is, and in, in, in some senses, the most human technology ever created. Because ultimately it's, it's, it's trained on us. It's trained on who we are. It's trained on our history. It's trained on our ideas, our books, the things that we've written down. And so when we're talking to ChatGPT or we're engaging with, artificial intelligence in a, in, a, in a very real way. We're having a conversation with ourselves, with humanity in a very broad sense. And so I think that that's, you know, there's a bunch of contradictions in there, um, but that's my, my take on like, what makes us human? What separates from, from us from this technology? What connects us to this technology? It's, it's certainly a very interesting time to be alive.